Well, good afternoon and welcome to the first in a series of webinars that will be focused on bringing you information on COVID-19. The information in these weekly webinars will be particularly geared toward long-term care and skilled nursing facilities, but we encourage everyone who's interested to attend. During today's webinar, we'll be talking about frequently asked questions about COVID-19 vaccinations and boosters. Everyone's gonna be on mute today, but if you have any questions, just enter them into the chat at any time and we'll address them throughout the webinar. We also wanna encourage you to join us every Wednesday at 2 p.m. for more webinars in this series. Next week, we'll be discussing the latest updates and visitation guidelines for long-term care and skilled nursing facilities. My name is Mitzi Vince, and I'm a communications specialist with Quality Insights. And without further ado, I'll get us started with some of the most frequently asked questions that we've received about COVID-19 vaccinations and boosters. And we will follow up with any of your questions that we can answer in addition to these. All right, if you can see, I just wanna make sure that everyone can see what they're supposed to be seeing. Um, you should be seeing a screen that says Quality Insights Podcast. If you are seeing that, um, just let me know in the chat. I just wanna make sure that it's showing up the way it's supposed to. Okay, great. All right, we'll go ahead and get this started. Frequently asked questions about COVID-19 vaccinations and boosters, a conversation with Kia Wills and Sheila Barnett. All right, well, welcome. Um, on this episode of our podcast, we're talking to Kia Wills and Sheila Barnett, both from our Quality Insights team. Kia Wills is the Quality Innovation Network Quality Improvement Organization Program Director at Quality Insights. She brings 20 years of experience in the healthcare industry, and for the past 12 years, Kia has been working at Quality Insights as a quality improvement specialist, project coordinator, and subject matter expert in health equity and population health. Kia is also an adjunct professor at the Community College of Baltimore County and Pierce College. He has worked in all healthcare settings from hospitals to federally qualified healthcare organizations. She's known for her work in population health, quality improvement, and health policy. So we also have Sheila Barnett, who is a quality improvement specialist at Quality Insights. Sheila developed a love for geriatrics and long-term care in 1997 when she worked as a certified nursing assistant while attending Mountain State University for her bachelor's degree in nursing. Once graduating and passing her boards, she continued in geriatrics and long-term care, serving in roles like RN charge nurse, MDS coordinator, assistant director of nursing, and director of nursing. Prior to joining Quality Insights, she also gained years of experience working with the Raleigh County Commission on Aging's many personal care programs. So welcome, Kia and Sheila, and thank you both for joining us today to talk about COVID-19 vaccinations. Thank you. All right, so um, to get us started, I, I wanted to start with one of the topics, um, a question that I remember hearing a lot of people asking about when the vaccine first rolled out, and that is the cost of the vaccine. Can you talk about the costs or fees that are associated with COVID-19 vaccines and boosters and what people can expect as far as what they might pay for those things? Okay. Um, yes. I can. Um, so for the COVID-19 vaccine, for five and older, it is at no cost to the recipient. Um, however, uh, the vaccination providers, they may seek appropriate reimbursements from the recipient's plan of program. So their private insurance or um, the Medicare, Medicaid uh, for the vaccine administration fee. However, the recipients should never receive a bill for charges related to the COVID-19 vaccine and booster as well. That's applicable to the booster as well. Okay. Um, so we know, in addition to that, we know that we're in the midst of flu season right now. 
Um, and of course, you know, we encourage everyone to get a flu shot if they can. Is it okay for people to get their flu shots and their COVID-19 vaccines or boosters at the same time? I know some people have, have wondered about that. Yes, you can actually get them both at the same time. Um, you will not get them in the same form or location. However, you can receive both at the same time. And what about people who have received their first vaccine shot, but maybe they're overdue to receive the second shot? Do they have to start over? Or is there a time frame that's still acceptable to get that second shot? What kind of guidance is out there about that? Good question. Um, you should get your second shot as close as the recommended three weeks or four weeks interval as possible. Um, however, uh, you can get your second shot uh, once you are aware or realize that you need it, um, you do not need to start over. It is recommended that you get it close to the recommended time frame, but you do not need to start over. Um, one thing that I'm not sure many people realize is that it's important to be mindful of when to schedule a mammogram in relation to getting the COVID-19 vaccine or booster. That's one thing that I didn't know about until recently myself. Can you talk about that and what people need to know? Yes, um, for that, it is appropriate for you to wait uh, four to six weeks after getting your vaccine to get your mammogram. Um, just due to any side effects you may have that could cause your test results not to be accurate. So it's recommended to wait you know, four to six weeks um, before getting your vaccine. Yeah, and that's really interesting. I, I actually called to schedule mine last month and they did ask me specifically if I had had a COVID vaccine within the last few weeks. So I thought that that was really interesting. Um, now for women who are out there who are pregnant or planning to become pregnant, what do they need to know about getting the vaccine or booster? Is it safe for them? Um, yes, it is safe. And there is no evidence that fertility is affected by any of vaccine, including the COVID-19 vaccines. Um, it is actually recommended for people who are pregnant, breastfeeding, trying to get pregnant now, or who might become pregnant in the future. Um, you may want to talk to your doctor um, about the COVID-19 vaccination, but it's not required. And also, we do recommend or encourage you to enroll in the VSAFE, which is the CDC smartphone-based tool that provides the personalized health check-ins after your vaccination. Um, a pregnancy registry has been established to gather all the information on the health of pregnant people that are receiving these vaccines. Right. Um, and so for what about people, this is actually a question that I've heard a lot recently also, what about people who have already been infected with COVID-19 should they still get a vaccine or booster? I know some people think that once they have it, they've got an immunity and they don't need to get vaccinated. What, what guidance is out there about that? No, absolutely. If you've had COVID-19 infection, the CDC strongly recommends that you go ahead and get vaccinated. It just gives you a longer lasting and more robust protection, which is needed to conquer the various um, variants that are currently circulating in this country. Let's take a moment to focus um, specifically on booster shots. The CDC recently updated its recommendations on boosters. Can you give us an overview of who can get a booster, when they can get it, and which one they should get? What kind of um, updated stuff is out there? Um, the people that receive um, like the Pfizer vaccination series, they should wait at least five months before getting the booster. Uh, those that receive the Moderna um, need to wait around six months before getting their booster. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine, however, it's, it's a two-month period after getting the, the, the first dose of your vaccination. Um, you can choose which COVID-19 uh, vaccination booster that you want. Uh, CDC does recommend the Pfizer or the Moderna. Um, and of course, teens 12 to 17 can only get the Pfizer. Before we go, we know that the latest variant as of this recording is the Omicron variant. What do we know so far about this variant and how it differs from other mutations of COVID-19? I mean, it just seems like this one, you, everyone it seems like is getting this. So what is different about this one? Well, the CDC has been collaborating and trying to learn more about the Omicron uh, variant. And they're finding that um, 
that it likely spreads more easily than the original virus. Uh, but compared to Delta, it's still kind of unknown um, exactly what the differences are. Uh, but they do expect that anyone with the Omicron infection can spread the virus to others, especially or even if they are vaccinated or don't have symptoms. Um, the current vaccinations are used to protect against severe illness, hospitalizations, and deaths due to the infection with the Omicron variant. However, uh, breakthrough infections in people who are fully vaccinated are likely to occur. As with other variants like Delta, um, the vaccinations have been effective at preventing the severeness of the illness, hospitalizations, death, um, and the recent emergence of the Omicron emphasizes the importance of getting your vaccination and your boosters. Um, vaccinations remain the best public health measure to protect people from COVID-19. It helps slow the transmission. It helps reduce the likelihood of new variants emerging. And of course, masks offer protection against all the variants of COVID. And CDC does continue to recommend wearing a mask in public, indoor settings, and areas of high uh, community transmissions, regardless of your vaccination status. Before we go, is there anything that either one of you want to say about vaccinations and the booster shots? Um, I know we've touched on a lot of the important frequently asked questions that we get, but are there anything, any, is there anything out there that you all have heard people ask about or, um, you know, common things that maybe even you've questioned in the beginning and 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 what you kind of know about that now through your work that you know even if you're vaccinated like Sheila mentioned you can still get COVID however the vaccination the booster shot add the extra layer of protection to avoid hospitalization and a severe reaction so uh, I strongly encourage you all to get the best vaccine, the booster, um, because of that extra layer of protection. Um, again, it does not mean that you yourself or anyone that you know that are vaccinated will not catch uh, COVID. It just helps you fight through it. Well, I want to thank you both, Kia and Sheila, for taking time to provide your insight to us today. If you want to reach out to Kira Sheila directly, you can call Quality Insights at 1-800-642-8686. You enter extension 7825 for Kia and extension 3221 for Sheila. You can also contact them via email at swills at qualityinsights.org for Kia or S-B-A-R-N-E-T-T -T at qualityinsights.org for Sheila. And lastly, I just want to say thank you to our listeners for this podcast. You can check out our other interviews by visiting www.qualityinsights.org slash QIN underscore blogs and pods. So thanks for everything, and um, you guys have a great day. You too. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Okay, so that was um, the initial set of frequently asked questions that we had received. Um, I'm going to put myself up here on the screen. And um, if any of you have any other additional questions, please go ahead and type those into the chat. And I know Sheila and Kia are online here and they will um, answer those as they come up. And before we dive into those, I, um, I believe Sheila wanted to put some clarification on the booster shots. I know that the CDC's recently changed um, guidelines on that, I think just as of the past couple of days. So Sheila, if you wanna speak to that, go ahead. Oh, thanks, Mitzi. Um, yes, I just wanted to clarify um, that the booster shots now for Pfizer and Moderna are five months after the initial series. Um, it was six months and five months, as you saw in the video, but, but they have recently changed them both to five months after you have finished the initial series. Um, all right, so we've got a question in chat uh, from Pam. She asks, 
as a healthcare worker, am I considered fully vaccinated if I haven't been boosted yet? Mitzi, I'll take this one. Um, actually, Pam, yes, you are considered fully vaccinated um, if you haven't been boosted. Um, there are some new terminology um, for including the booster shot, which is boosted or up to date but the terminology fully vaccinated just refers to the first and the second dose in the Pfizer and Moderna series and the initial single dose um, for the J&J &J or Janssen vaccine. Um, they are now, like I said, using the new um, terminology boosted or up to date to include the booster shots. Okay, the next question that I see, um, this question's coming from Betty. She asks, is there a booster for Johnson & Johnson or just now the second dose? I'll take that. Um, so to my understanding, uh, Johnson & Johnson does not have a booster. However, if you receive Johnson & Johnson, the series, you can uh, take the uh, Moderna or Pfizer booster shot. So you can mix the booster shot up um, for the adults. However, for the, you know, the teenagers recommended to stick with the Pfizer. However, you can uh, get a different booster. Okay, uh, we've got another question. Um, this is, as a follow-up, if a resident received monoclonal antibodies, when can they receive the booster? Thanks so much for this podcast, very helpful. Uh, yes, I'll take that one as well. Um, for the uh, patients or residents that received the monoclonal antibodies, um, if they received the, the antibodies for post-exposure, um, you have to wait 30 days to receive your booster. But if they actually receive the antibodies for treatment for COVID, um, you, you, it is recommended to wait 90 days. Now, of course, you know, up to your healthcare provider always, but these are just general rules that, um, that we go by the 30 days and the 90 days. I'll give everybody just a couple minutes to enter in any more questions if you have any. Um, until, as we're waiting on people's questions, um, I wanted to ask you all, I know that we had addressed the difference between the Omicron variant and some of the older variants. Um, but one thing that I think is interesting, and I didn't know if you all might have any information, any more information about this, I've heard a lot of people talk about the difference in symptoms for Omicron and how um, it tends to mimic sinus infections and colds a little bit more than some of the older variants like the Delta variant and the original. Can you all talk any about um, what you know about that, if you've experienced or know anybody that's experienced something like that, or if there's anything out there officially from the CDC that that talks about any kind of differences in symptoms or what to look out for? Um, like from the CDC officially, I haven't seen, you know, anything specifically about the symptoms, but on speaking with um, the different nursing homes that I have communications with, you're correct. It's a lot of the sinus symptoms and um, the symptoms are, are a little bit different than what we had been seeing. Um, I'm also hearing that it's affecting the staff now more than the residents. Um, again, this is just um, things that I'm hearing from the facilities that I discuss, you know, their, their booster vaccinations and, and everything with. Um, but yeah, no, the symptoms are more sinus, more headache, more, you know, just kind of minor, but it, it seems to be affecting their staff more than the actual residents. 
Okay, we've got uh, another question. This asks, if I am boosted and exposed, do I need to quarantine five days or 10 days? I believe, you know, th those things have been changing. Um, I know that it's five days, you test yourself, you know, if you still are, you know, uh, positive, some places are making you still stay for, you know, the additional five days. Um, Chilla, have you heard anything else um, besides that? I know the five days is now the new one that CDC put out due to the research that they've received. Um, especially yeah, with it's um, basically I think it's it's depends on your symptoms. Um, for the mild, the, the moderate, you know, symptoms with no no fever, it's the five days. Um, if you're you're fevered and and have severe symptoms, of course, it's it's back to the um, the ten days. So it, it really just depends on your symptoms and the situation. Um, it, and like you said, it's changing every day. Right. So yes, it says uh, stay home for five days if you have no symptoms or your symptoms are resolving after five days, you can leave your house. Continue to wear a mask around others for five additional days. If you have a fever, continue to stay home until your fever resolves. Um, and then uh, there's also additional information. Uh, um, if you were exposed to someone with COVID-19, quarantine, um, if, you have, if you have been boosted, or completed the primary series of the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine within the last uh, six months, or completed the primary series of Johnson & Johnson vaccine within the last two months, wear a mask around others for 10 days, uh, test on day five if possible. If you develop symptoms, get a test and stay home. Yep, and just keep in mind that there are different um, rules for healthcare workers and the community. So if you're looking on the CDC website, make sure that you are um, paying attention to which which rules and regulations that you are you are looking at. Okay. Um, one person is asking if the recording will be available. They say, thank you. This has been helpful. Uh, yes, we're going to make this recording available. It will be posted on qualityinsights-qin.org. And also, um, I wanted to let everyone know to be on the lookout for a new weekly e-bulletin that we're going to be putting out. It's uh, called the Last Minute Lowdown. And this weekly e-bulletin is going to provide a summary of the week's office hours topics. If you're not aware, we also are going to be offering office hours for healthcare professionals on Tuesdays at 8 a.m. and Thursdays at 2 p.m. Um, and the information about um, the link to access those is gonna be in these weekly e-bulletins as well. And then we'll also include resources specific to immunizations, long-term care and skilled nursing facilities, including uh, the recording for these weekly Wednesday webinars. So um, if you are on, if you've been working with us and you already get our e-newsletters, um, you'll definitely be getting these weekly e-bulletins. If you don't get them typically, um, just uh, type your email address in the chat and I'll be sure to make sure that you're on the list and that you get those each week. But they are gonna be available on our website also. And I'll go ahead and type that into the chat for those of you who may not know the website address. It's... Um, www.qualityinsights-qin.org. And um, we'll have those posted in, in our um, webinar archive in the next few days. And again, I wanna remind you too, um, that we're gonna be doing this every Wednesday at two o'clock. Next week's topic is gonna to be talking about the updated guidelines on visitations in 
um, long-term care and skilled nursing facilities. And we're gonna be addressing a new topic each week. So um, unless anybody has any other questions, um, Kia, Sheila, do you all have any closing thoughts or comments that you'd like to share? Um, no, just, you know, um, like you mentioned, we are sent out information weekly um, and we will make sure, do our best in making sure that we provide you all with the most updated information. As you are aware, these things are changing uh, weekly. So we will definitely make sure you are all up to date with all the new uh, requirements. All right. Well, uh, thank you to everybody that tuned in today. Thank you, Kia and Sheila. And I hope to see everybody next Wednesday and um, pass along the word to your colleagues. If you think that uh, these Wednesday webinars would be helpful for them, please share that information with them, share the link for them to be able to register. Um, and we'll hope to see you next Wednesday. All right, everyone take care and have a good afternoon.